calculate formula as the A team. Uh, this is my co presenter, Patricia Will. My name is Christopher Reed. Uh, we both are team members of the Castellate Form and SAE team. We both are mechanical engineers and manufacturing engineers. Today we're going to talk about our vehicle and the sales and marketing of that vehicle. I'm going to start by talking about the design of the vehicle and where it stands. And that will talk about the sales of the vehicle. When we started on this design, we were given the premise that we needed to design a vehicle for the average weekend autocross racer. We took that very, very seriously. So what we did is we actually went to some SEC autocross events. And we got some info. One of the big things that we noticed was vehicles that were taking high numbers on the track were not the ones with the high most car numbers. Not the ones that looked really big. It's actually a lot of the ones that could stick to the ground and have a lot of torque to get out of the corners. From that, we started with our engine design. We looked at the restrictor, we looked at the flow through it, and we decided we want a low torque, low RPM, person with high torque, low RPM motor. And we looked at various ones. From that, we had three criteria that we kept in mind the entire time. We took into, mind, into, into account safety, reliability, and driving. For the engine, we wanted a safe and reliable motor, many different ones out in the market. Particularly looked at a lot of the lower RPM, higher torque motors. We ended up settling on the Honda Silverwing 600cc motor, not only because it's a parallel twin uh, motor with a decent amount of torque on the low end, but also it's kind of interesting because this motor actually has a CVT drive that's already designed in the core. With the CVT, the driver doesn't need a clutch, the driver doesn't need to shift, doesn't need to worry about finding the right gear for the corner doesn't need to be worried about what gear they are on coming out of the quarter. They don't have to constantly take their hands off the wheel onto the shifter back and forth. If any of you guys have driven autocross, there's nothing crazier than you miss that gear and want to hate yourself. So what we did is we wanted that same gear. From that, we designed around the driver. We looked at where the driver could be in the vehicle. And so we designed the cockpit that was big enough for even the largest member of our team. I can tell you, it's quite large. <laughs> but we also designed it with adjustable cut so that even the smallest driver could drive it. From that, we also looked at the legroom for these drivers. We're going to accommodate a large selection of drivers. We need to have a large area for that, for their legs. So we went with an overhead steering rack design to allow for the most clearance for the legs of the driver. Then from that, we designed the suspension around that cockpit area fit and to allow for the most adjustment. If you look on our vehicle, our shocks are mounted up top, right underneath the nose, which is accessible by only four zoom spinnings, along with the steering adjustments as well. On the rear, we integrated the full rod design so the shocks are mounted on the side and open location where you can easily adjust them. From that, we decided that we were going to try to keep as many parts that were off the shelf in the market. So our steering rack is off the shelf, our wheels, our tires, our brake pedal assembly, our brakes, our rotors, our engine, our transmission, our gears, our differential, pretty much everything of this vehicle is off the shelf. So it's very little custom work we actually have to build and design. Once we had completed the design, we decided to look at the market and the actual real cost of our vehicle. And one of the questions that we've always asked well, how much does this vehicle cost? And the true fact of the matter is because we kept our parts, most of them off rack, we made the cost to the consumer, the cost of the people who are actually going to be buying these vehicles, relatively low. For example, at a weekend race, if you blow up a motor or transmission and you have custom parts, you might as well be hosing the weekend. But in our particular vehicle, if you blow up your motor or transmission, I guarantee you there's somebody on Craigslist selling this motor for this transmission. And it is designed and manufactured in such a way that it could come exactly out of the scooter that it comes from and be bolted directly up to the car. Once we had established that our design was an intact package, we looked at our, our market. And rather than marketing this car to the established autocross racer, we said, well, let's see who exactly wants to drive this vehicle. We went out and we polled a consumer base. 
and from that consumer base, what we established is that this vehicle, being so adjustable, transcends the, the breach between the autocross racer and the weekend getaway, the family. This car could be the on-road experience for a typical off-road family. For example, a father-daughter, or father-son, mother-son, father-daughter, however you want to work as it. This car is adjustable so that anybody from the height of 5'2 to the height of 6'4 can get into this car with one adjustment and drive it. And that made this particular package is exceptionally desirable for our actual market. From there, we broke down our numbers and we came up with the, uh, the actual hard costs. For example, our cost cost our car cost 15.8 uh, k to manufacture. All right. So what's our MSRP? Our MSRP is 22.499. And believe it or not, that is the average price that our whole base said they would pay for this vehicle after driving. So from there, we looked at our, what our profits would be at a manufacturing production of 1,000 units per year. You have initial cost of, of goods sold at 15.8, your, your yearly revenue of 22.49, giving you a gross profit of 6.68, which is approximately a gross profit rate of 29.4% right off the bat. Now the question that typically comes after that is, okay, great, so how are you going to sell this car? And to answer that question, we established a marketing package. We have a team of individuals ready to actually market this car in a way very similar to the can Spider did with their initial marketing plan in the United States. We will take this prototype vehicle and a list of others to a setup event where we will actually invite people to come out and say, hey, would you like to try our product? Hop in, take it for a spin. Don't worry if you don't know how to drive standard, that's okay, it's got a CVT. Just go enjoy it for a little while. And that made this package accessible to people who don't already race. That transcends the boundaries that may exist. And for people who do already race, it's something new, it's something fresh, and it's something fun to drive. And because of the low cost, it's accessible to those as a non-primary form of racing. The question that comes after that, how are we going to manufacture it? And to answer that question, we're not. We design this vehicle. Now we're going to sell you the rights to that design so that you can manufacture this vehicle in a manner that is profitable to your company. And what we're asking for in return is 30% of your gross profit. In order for the rights to this vehicle to be transferred to you. We feel that our design is absolutely intact, it is proven, it is for all intents and purposes accessible to many different types of people. And like Chris mentioned, that by testing it on our drivers, our shortest driver is 5 foot 2. Our tallest driver is six foot four. We have more than a 200 pound weight swing. And they all enjoy driving this vehicle. And the vehicle performs equally as well for all of our drivers. So, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this design. I hope you enjoyed this package. Thank you very much. <laughs>